Welcome back, everybody. She's a self-described thriller chick whose latest novel already has me hooked. Welcome back, local and New York best-selling author J.T. Ellison. Oh my gosh, okay, I, I, I say that, I really am hooked, it's so good. Thank but you. before we kind of jump into this, you know, you have written dozens of books, all thrillers, which is so fun, I love the genre. Uh, so I guess, how did you come up with the idea for this and then give us a brief synopsis? Okay, so actually this book was almost a decade in the making. Oh. I had been trying to tell it from the wrong point of view. And every time I sat down to work on it, it wouldn't work. And it was you know, a story of a man who was a sperm donor and all the children kept knocking on his door. But something about it didn't work until I found Olivia, his wife. So now it is the story of Olivia and Park Bender, who are a young couple who are trying and failing to have a baby. And the morning she has her sixth miscarriage, she goes downstairs to tell him and to be comforted. And before they can talk, the police knock on the door they're looking for his son because he's the suspect in a murder. But Park and Olivia don't have any children. So <laughs> a lot of lies have been told over the years and clearly um, things break apart for them from that moment on. Wow, it, it, and it's interesting because, you know, in the news the past handful of years, we've heard these stories about, um, you know, kids being born and finding out thanks to right. Ancestry or 23andMe or any of those, that they have all these siblings mm, all over. Of siblings, yep. Never before have you thought about the ethical question of, well, what would you do if you found out one of them had committed a murder? Right. Whoa! I mean, it's, it's hard enough if the child that you've raised becomes a criminal and gets involved, but for somebody that you don't even know, I mean, to be blindsided. And the whole idea behind this book is, what would I do in this situation? Yes. That's what I want every reader to just examine. What would I do if I was in this situation? Well, I'm thinking that right now because I am, I'm not finished yet. So I've still got a ways to go. Um, okay, so as you mentioned, infertility is a big part mm -hmm. of this. How, where did the idea come from to kind of mix the infertility with the thriller aspect? Well, I'm a thriller writer, yes. so I have to have a thriller story. Yes. <laughs> but infertility is much more of a women's fiction story. So I merged the two. I found the path through Olivia of her being presented with, wow, my husband's son is a murderer. And then he becomes a little bit obsessed with her. So it, it just takes my the normal story that, you know, it's a terrible time for these for these people and twists it and puts my typical edge to it. It makes it a little scarier. Mm, now writing about infertility, you've, you've talked about it a little bit before, is somewhat personal to you. Was that, was it harder to write about it? Was mm. it more helpful to write about it? somewhere in between? It was incredibly hard to write. You know, it wasn't pulling off the Band-Aid, it was getting razor blades out and carving myself up. What, has, what I thought was gonna be the worst is actually the best, which has been talking about it with people, of actually finally being open and honest about my truth that I suffered from severe infertility. My husband and I tried for years and we do not have children. Spoiler alert, it did not work for us. So I thought it was gonna be really hard to write the book and go out and talk about it, but now I'm able to really connect with people on a level that I haven't been able to before and it's been incredible being wow. out here talking about this book. It's, it's been very uplifting when I thought it was gonna be hard. Wow, that's so, it, I mean, think of just the, the fact that that was such a surprise, like that mm -hmm. aspect of it, and I'm sure finding community, being able to talk about it, hearing right. other people's stories, oh. all the things. There have been a lot of other people's stories, and, and the other thing is, if I can help just one woman who is going through the struggles that we went through know that there is a good, joyous, full life on the other side of this, no matter what happens. Mm. That's my that's my gift for this. Oh, you're amazing. Thank you so much. This is a great book. Again, I haven't finished it, but I'm going to. <laughs> and everybody, please listen to this because tonight JT will be speaking at 6.30 p.m. at Parnassus Books. We love Parnassus. Yeah. You'll also be there with Rhea Fry, who we love, who we had on mm -hmm. last week, I believe. So make sure to register at ParnassusBooks.net. And of course, you can check out more from JT at her website, jtellison.com. You're amazing. I love your books, and thank you for being so open and honest and inspiring. Thank you so much thank for you. having me. I appreciate it. Absolutely. You got to come on back, write more. <laughs>
Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Will do. <laughs>